Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very much hope that this video finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. And today, if you don't mind, I would like to continue on with our exploration of this set from the Criterion Collection, which is called Essential Fellini. And I'd like to today focus in on the fourth disc the fourth Blu-ray disc that is included in such set from Criterion. And disc four sets forth the film from 1954, which is called La Strada. from 1954 and it is directed by Federico Fellini. It is credited with respect to its screenplay. It's credited to Fellini and Tullio Pinelli and the story is also credited to uh, Pinelli and Fellini with a contribution also credited to Ennio Flaiano. And so we've seen these names before uh, in other works and so they are collaborators with Fellini on an artistic and creative level. So. Uh, and so we see yet more output uh, from their collaboration, such as this film, La Strada. And it is a film, of course, that stars um, uh, Giulietta Massina and Anthony Quinn and Richard Basehart uh, and others. But they form the triumvirate of characters that really uh, propel the plot forward. And in particular, we have the relationships uh, between and among them. Uh, and we have... Uh, Massina, who plays Gelsomina, and Anthony Quinn playing Zampano, and Richard Basard, whose character is uh, referred to in English translations as Fool or The Fool, uh, sometimes referred to in commentary as The Mad One, but uh, for purposes of the Criterion release uh, in the, sub uh, the subtitles, etc., referred to as The Fool. Uh, but these uh, make up the core central triumvirate of characters and the relationships between and among them are what drive the essential plot points forward to its inexorable and heartbreaking conclusions. Uh, so this is the essence of the film and the background production details regarding La Strada. Now the La Strada, the word, I understand can be translated into English as the road. And I think that is a very appropriate image and title to have, especially when thinking about the context of the story, La Strada, which, if we were to try to boil it down to its essence, is a story that is following this uh, traveling sideshow type of act, which is by this strong man, uh, Zampano, played by Anthony Quinn. And uh, along the way, through a certain set of circumstances that we understand from the outset, uh, this young woman, uh, Gelsomina, played by uh, Giulietta Messina, uh, is his associate and uh, she accompanies him along this particular journey as they go from place to place and he does his strong man act with her as a kind of assistant. But we also see a developing relationship in varying forms and degrees of emotional consequence. Uh, both positive and maybe not so positive, but it, it spans the whole spectrum, if you will, of an emotional human experience. And again, I'm referring to the relationship that we see develop between these two characters, Zampano and uh, Gelsomina. And then we have uh, the third character who is very important, who is the Richard Basehart character, the fool or fool. And we see how he and Gelsomina uh, are, uh, have their relationship and we see of course the kind of rivalry that exists between Zampano and, and the fool. So uh, from there we have further developments of plot and intrigue, uh, human dramatic intrigue that lead to uh, certain circumstances and situations uh, that uh, propel the story to its climax. Uh, and we therefore have this journey film uh, and we have this at the center of this journey or road movie 
the workings of the dynamics of the relationships between and among these characters. So this is perhaps at its very essence, in my own crude way of explaining it, the story of La Strada. Uh, and we have the backdrop being the entertainment world, the traveling circus world and sideshow uh, arena. And we have the uh, various people that these characters meet. So it is a road movie. It also has this episodic-like nature to its plot structure, thus making it similar to films like, say, Variety Lights or films like uh, Ivi Teloni in terms of, of, uh, of a thematic environment backdrop as well as the episodic core structure of the plot dynamics. So, uh, and, and we also understand that uh, the road film is, or the road journey film is something that is very much important in the context of Fellini's filmography as a whole. So uh, this is, of course, a very consistent work in the, uh, in the catalog of Fellini's films. It is uh, such an emotional and powerful film for a number of reasons. I think it is due to, for example, the way that uh, these situations play themselves out. I think we have a, ver a core group of very dynamic characters, each in his or her own way, uh, view the world and view the circumstances uh, uh, through their own lenses. But it's always a very approachable thing. Uh, what is also amazing, too, is that Fellini's story and camera doesn't, doesn't shy away from portraying these characters sometimes in a, in a not-so-positive light all the time. And so that adds further human dimension to their characterizations. They aren't wholly uh, positive or wholly negative. They are human. And as, human, uh, as humanly drawn characters, I think that creates more accessibility vis-a-vis -vis us, the viewer, and the film, thus making uh, viewers like me able to dive into the world and thus uh, really be along for the emotional ride that the film takes me all the way up to its, uh, to its very end, a uh, very powerful end. So I think that's one aspect as to why it is a very powerful film even to this day. It is also very touching and poignant, and it relies on a, a, a set of uh, sort of philosophies about the world that I think are very uh, attractive and uh, very appealing. And it adds further fuel to the cinematic poetry that Fellini and company are engaged in. And so what I mean about the philosophies, I think we have this sense of the uh, uh, of value that is sought to be placed on even the very minute of things uh, from anything from the grandest level all the way down to say a pebble the parable of the pebble for example and so there is this uh, there is this attractiveness to the notion of everything in life having a kind of value now whether or not that philosophy is indeed personified or exemplified or actualized in the context of the film, you're going to have to watch the film and interpret it in your own way to see if it, in, it indeed is true in the actions of the film or they're just words. But in any event, that philosophy is in the air, and I think that is a very attractive one. It also gives credence to the idea of, of creating a sense of sympathy and humanizing certain situations, even though they might seem very harsh, very brutish, and almost perhaps barbaric. And I think that is a very powerful way that the camera of Fellini is able to capture what might be deemed to be the essence of the humanity of the characters, even when these characters in plot developments go to certain extremes. And so I think that is one of the ways that we see value uh, in everything, as it were, both in cinematic terms and also in the context of the environment of the plot and the, the world that the film is portraying itself. And so that's another way that I think it remains a very powerful emotional viewing experience. And I should also point to the, the grace and beauty that uh, is embodied in each of these performances by the, as I indicated, the triumvirate of characters, the, the trio of characters that really is the, the core of the film in many respects. Uh, Richard Basehart's Fool or the Fool is 
He's uh, a very, almost a comic relief character, a very uh, interesting contrast to the Zampano character, and yet he still displays these wonderful moments of warmth and humanity and compassion, perhaps, especially vis-a-vis -vis his, uh, his way and his uh, relationship with uh, um, uh, the Giulietta Messina character, uh, Gelsomina. Uh, and then uh, as a contrast to him, we have Zampano, who represents a very brutish, a very rough uh, natured character, but perhaps he may have some secrets of his own, but perhaps it is a kind of journey that he is also on uh, in the hopes of maybe uh, ultimately and perhaps unintentionally, but still uh, nonetheless being able to discover a sense of, of the humanity within his own soul. Will he or will he not be able to do that? That I think is one of the questions of the film La Sora as it progresses from, uh, from its plot point to plot point. But it's a very compelling story all the same. Also we have the very delicate and powerful performance by uh, Giulietta Messina as the, 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 the delicate character of Gelsomina who is uh, maybe she might be described in certain areas as being laconic or uh, maybe not relying so much on the spoken word as much as others, but she has this angelic presence, this sense of innocence, uh, the sense, therefore, of tragedy and sadness combined with the elements of humor and comedy that uh, really help to embody and personify what is one of the key aspects and elements of Fellini's films as a whole, which is this ability in quick and swift cinematic strokes to present uh, moments that are so complex in the intertwining of the comic and the humorous and also the tragic and the pathos and the melancholy all in one. And we've seen this expression done in past films, I would suggest, from all the way back to Variety Lights, Ivi Vitaloni, and uh, The White Cheek. Here we have moments like this in the film, La Strada. We also have what in essence is a kind of character in the form of Gelsomina, who is perhaps the cinematic character embodiment of this, uh, of this uh, uh, filmmaking poetic philosophy of Fellini himself. And uh, that makes her character, I think, uh, in many ways, so compelling and so dynamic and so warm. And, uh, uh, and it, she forms a great contrast to the world that she occupies, but also, also in the way in which the camera is trying to capture the human essence of these people. She is very much at home in this tableau that is being created by Fellini and company. It is an extraordinary set of performances, and I think that too helps to give the film its sense of beauty and accessibility and power and emotional uh, impact that, as I say, resonates even years after its initial release in 1954. So uh, that is, I think, another source of this, the great power of this film. And also we should point out the artistic aspects of the film as well. I mentioned the story collaborators uh, that are credited along with Fellini. I didn't mention it in past works uh, before, but we should also mention the music, Nino Rota. This is an example of the great collaboration between Fellini and Rota, which we know is so powerful and so iconic. And here we have an example of such iconic collaboration. The themes here are famous, and they are famous for good reason, because they are excellent. They carry the film, they create this sense of world and depth, but they also have this delicate charm and nature that is, as I say, touching upon the melancholy and also touching upon the humor and grace and humanity while being very light and very expressive and also linked to this carnival-esque character or, 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 or carnival-esque type of atmosphere that is embodied in the plot and environment structures of the film. So it is everything at once and it is also very beautiful and very uh, tragic at the same time which makes the which is uh, the, the, what makes the Rota Fellini collaboration so uh, legendary. Uh, in the cinematic landscape of things. So uh, well done for this. And this is one of the, uh, another reason why this film is very famous and very memorable as it is. 
And I should say also that uh, the film does continue on this notion, if you will, of Fellini and his art and his relationship or the art's relationship with the Fellini-esque on the one hand and the neorealism on the other hand. There are arguably aspects of the film that could be said to be borrowing from the neorealism tradition. There are other aspects too that seem to be borrowing from the world or seem to be developing the sense of the cinematic style that will be the Fellini-esque style. So uh, just like in past films that we've discussed all the way from Variety Lights onwards, there is this kind of discussion uh, going on. Uh, and so that I think lends further uh, potential for conversations in the context of Fellini's uh, art and his filmography. Ultimately, though, it is a, a powerful emotional statement, and I think it's powerful in terms of the way it, it, it seems to present information in a seemingly simplistic manner, and I mean that not in a negative way, but in a very positive way, in a seemingly simplistic manner that helps, as I say, us, the viewer, to access the world and access the characters' feelings and emotions and stories. And once that access has been established, then we become fully enveloped in what the film has to offer, which, as I say, is a truly emotional uh, uh, impact that is uh, that echoes uh, for m many years after the original uh, release of this film. This is one of the great masterpieces of uh, Federico Fellini. This is the film La Strada. And so this essential Fellini set has the film, and it's purported to be based on uh, a 4K uh, transfer resolution uh, restoration. And we did find it in the Criterion Collection in this DVD, uh, two-disc DVD set uh, in this uh, the version I have is in this sort of thicker case at spy number 219. And while I thought it looked great on the DVD release, uh, I think it looks great now. So uh, it's wonderful to have it in this presentation the way it is as included as part of the Essential Fellini set. And speaking of the earlier DVD release, I should mention that the, uh, the Blu-ray also has a number of supplements that are worth noting and worth checking out because they are really excellent uh, in my personal view and the views of others, I think. Uh, first of all, we should point out that the film itself is made available with an English language audio option soundtrack and the English dub, I'm sorry, the Italian language uh, language soundtrack and then the English dub language soundtrack. And so uh, whatever you prefer, uh, you can choose the, Eng the Italian language version or the English language version. Uh, as Martin Scorsese indicates in the introduction that's included as part of the supplements, and I'll get to that momentarily, uh, and ha as, as others might have indicated, perhaps the, the, the natural preference or the default preference for a lot of people might be the Italian language track, for good reason, of course. Uh, however, there might be also value in watching the English dub version uh, for a number of reasons. I think also because we get the voice, uh, the actor voice, uh, Anthony Quinn and Richard Basehart, I understand. And so if you're interested in getting the real voice of uh, the actors, uh, you can get a chance to listen to that by selecting the English dub version. So um, this is a, a very interesting option, and it's certainly worth checking out if you are interested and you are a fan of this film and you are interested in the further exploration uh, of this film and how many audiences might have viewed the film uh, back in the day. So I think it's a very uh, great opportunity to watch the film uh, in the English language if you are so interested. But in any event, we still have that option uh, available to us. And then continuing on, we have the 2000, it's described as being 2003 uh, commentary track by Peter Bondanella. And the track actually also appeared as an option to the earlier DVD set from Criterion. It is marvelous. It is so uh, packed full of information and it... Uh, uh, Bondanella is an expert in Italian cinema and neorealism cinema, and so he is uh, an, an academic and scholar and critic and expert. But his delivery is not at all 
uh, I, I think it's it's it it's very accessible. So it doesn't have this sense of inaccessibility. Uh, it's on the contrary, he presents information so well and so clearly and so uh, and and with such. Uh, force and also such confidence, but also a, a lot of information. So it is a great commentary track. I love the way that he he uh, is able to balance talking about the themes of Italian cinema and how this film relates to the concept of neorealism, as I uh, as I alluded to a little bit uh, a few moments ago. And he's also able to engage with the film and the text itself, these uh, the intra and intertextual discussions. And he makes mention, for example, of uh, one of the famous passages, for example, of the film, the so-called uh, parable of the pebble and the like. And so he gives insight as an example to that scene and to other scenes as well. Uh, it is an overall brilliant commentary track and I'm so happy that uh, it is uh, carried over from the earlier DVD. So if you haven't heard the commentary track, please check it out. One of the things, of course, that we have noticed or have noticed so far in the films that are included in the set is we haven't had an, a number of commentary tracks as of yet, but now we have one with La Strada. So please check it out if you can. And then I referred to it earlier, but another supplement that we had on the DVD, but now we also have on the Blu-ray, is the Martin Scorsese introduction. It's approximately 13 minutes. This is a one-on-one -on -one interview with Scorsese where he's talking about his first experiences with the film La Strada and watching the film um, in English and how it informed his uh, childhood cinematic experiences and helped to uh, give him a better appreciation or a fuller appreciation at that time. He was still very young when he first saw it. It's amazing to think how young he was when he was watching these films uh, and that he was able to, at an early age, begin to, with uh, upon watching films like La Strada, begin to get a sense and appreciation of the importance of Italian cinema during the 1950s. And, and so, uh, and that leads to a very rich and exciting discussion, a very detailed discussion too, uh, from Scorsese about this. I love this too. I love the detail that he goes into. Um, it's an introduction, but perhaps it might be better uh, to watch the, uh, the introduction after you've seen the film. Uh, because, uh, as I say, there is a level of detail that is, uh, I think, very uh, informative, especially after one has seen the film. So, uh, But uh, the point I wanted to bring up there to emphasize is that uh, it is 13 minutes, but it's so chock full of information in that glorious, charming, witty way that Scorsese talks about films when he is excited. And my goodness, he is so excited about this film. And it's uh, it's a pleasure to to behold. So uh, please check out the Martin Scorsese introduction, approximately 13 minutes. Uh, that's not all, because then we have a a uh, another uh, supplement which was carried over from the DVD. It's called Federico Fellini's Autobiography. And this is a documentary which is described as being from 2000 by Paquito del Bosco. And the concept of the documentary is that uh, th we had, there was a lot of archival footage of Fellini and Fellini's uh, discussions or Fellini films uh, in uh, Italian uh, television broadcasting archives. And so that was relied upon, and, and my understanding is that footage was then edited together in this way, in this manner. And so we get, in essence, an edited selection of archival uh, footage of uh, discussions with Fellini, uh, conversations with Fellini, maybe uh, conversations with him on the set as he's preparing a shot or preparing a particular scene in a film, and maybe his uh, conversations as he is traveling with the film during the award season for various films, etc. So. Uh, and we also see uh, behind the scenes him working on the set, actors getting ready for a particular scene that's going to be shot and the like. So I think in that regard, this, uh, this supplement, Federico Fellini's autobiography, is very uh, informative and in actually in incredibly important. It's incredibly important. Um, uh, for example, we see um, uh, a lot of discussion on the making of certain scenes regarding the film La Dolce Vita. And so uh, that's very, 
that's really exciting in and of itself, especially for anyone who's a fan of La Dolce Vita. And we'll, of course, talk about the film La Dolce Vita in a future video. We also see, for example, uh, working on the film Eight and a Half, Otto Imezza, and also the award season that followed that film, because it was, as we know, a very critically acclaimed film at the time and even now. Uh, we also see him working on other films, uh, Juliet of the Spirits and also uh, uh, Sat uh, Fellini's Satyricon. And uh, we also see what I understand is uh, later um, his discussion in the context of the film Amalcord. We also see some interesting uh, shots. Uh, there's an interesting exchange between Fellini and Ingmar Bergman. Uh, so uh, don't uh, don't miss that. Uh, please check that out if you can. There's also some interesting uh, references made to uh, Mastorna, and this is in reference to what I understand is Journey of G. Mastorna, which is uh, one of the most famous uh, films never made by Fellini. And uh, it's very exciting to see references made to this unmade film. Uh, and if you are interested, I know that there are materials that are available outside of the set, etc., um, uh, regarding this particular project. And so, um, anyway, so references to uh, Mastorna character and, and the like. So and they're very brief, and they're not really elaborated upon uh, in a fuller context of the, the film itself. But uh, the references are still there, as, as far as I understand it. So uh, this is a very, I think, important and relevant supplement to watch for anyone who is a fan of Fellini or is engaged in a Fellini journey. So please check it out if you can. I would say that there is uh, not a lot of focus uh, on La Strada per se. So it's more about Fellini and uh, pretty much focused uh, maybe from La Dolce Vita onwards. But still, we're getting a sense of who Fellini was behind the scenes and the actors and the, the, the glamour and uh, glitz, if you will of uh, the the award season and the like and so and its progression of uh, Fellini from the years from the 1960s all the way on into the, the 70s so uh, this is I think very much uh, worth checking out if you can this is Federico Fellini's autobiography uh, this is approximately 55 minutes and then we have the trailer uh, for the film and that rounds out the the great supplemental section uh, that's included as part of La Strada, uh, being the fourth disc in the Essential Fellini box set from the Criterion Collection. So I think, uh, to conclude, uh, it is a film that is, of course, very consistent in the body of work of Federico Fellini as he, we have seen it thus far. It is also very important, uh, and it also remains, I think, a favorite of a lot of people who are fans of Fellini, either uh, in terms of, a, of an expert level, uh, a devotion and admiration of Fellini's works, all the way to, say, the casual fan of Fellini. Um, and maybe for a number of people, La Storada could be the only film that they've seen by Fellini. Uh, whatever the case may be, of course, there is a, a wide range, if you will, of how one can approach the works of Fellini. But I think oftentimes in that conversation, La Strada comes up a lot for excellent reason, because it is a film that I think feels accessible. It is a film that feels like it is an expression of Fellini's art, especially during this time, with certain neorealism ties on the one hand, but also senses of cinematic poetry and flourish on the other that will, I think, carry through into the world of the Fellini-esque. It also has at its heart and uh, core the soul of the film being this uh, set of characters and how they are portrayed, how they are realized, how they are presented uh, with these brilliant performances, each capturing in their own way a sense of the emotion and the power and the beauty and grace that uh, accompanies each of their stories. No matter if their stories uh, tend to um, or may tend to go off into very extreme territories, there's always a focus in on the essence of the humanity. Uh, and combined with that, the artistry and craft that is going into the film and the, the story dynamics, the music, the way things are framed, everything about it creates the sense of something that is truly magical in cinema. This is Federico Fellini's La Strada. Okay, my friends, so that's it for now. And so until we meet again, 
Please be happy and healthy and well, and please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. Thank you so much, as always, for your time. I very much appreciate it. Stay strong, stay safe, and cheers. Thank you.